Hey, hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jesse. If you're new here, welcome. I talk about books nonstop on my channel. Regular viewers can attest to that. We're halfway into the year, 2023 is flying by. Like, goodbye 2023, you'll be gone before I know it. Today I am bringing you a revamped version of the mid-year book freakout tag. This book tag has been around for a long time and while I love it and eat it up every year, I wanted to bring some freshness to it. There are questions in the original tag that I love and then there are questions in the original tag that I just don't relate to anymore or I don't have an answer to these days. So I snatched it, revamped it, and now I'm calling it the Mid-Year Reading Check-In Book Tag. Now I'm obviously going to give credit to the OG creators anytime I do this tag because obviously they're the brains behind the original. This is just a revamp, a refresh. Ellie and Shammy, you can find them linked down below in the description. They're the original creators of the Mid-Year Book Freakout Tag. But again, I wanted to shake it up, add a few questions, drop a few questions, spice, spice, spice. And that's exactly what I did. You can find all the questions down below in the description. Without further ado, let's get started. What's the best book you've read so far this year? A book that hollowed out my heart and created a house inside of it. House of Hollow. <laughs> this book follows the Hollow sisters who all at one point in their lives went missing. When they came back, they could never recall anything that happened to them or where they went. And their lives had changed significantly, both physically and mentally. Now, 10 years later, one of the girls has gone missing again, but this time she's left clues to her whereabouts. This book was right up my alley. TMI, but this book has the stickies on it. I got this at the bargain section at Books A Million, which God bless the bargain section, but it had a sticker on it, and now there's sticker residue that I can't get off. It's gross. Need to fix that before I fully add it to the collection. This has that eerie yet beautiful writing style that's paired beautifully with this bizarre plot. It somehow mushes beauty and gruesome in a way that works, in a way that makes sense. The writing is like walking through this like whimsical garden, but you're being chased by darkness. And that could have people chucking this book, running away from this book, finding a hollow house to shove it in and leave behind. But I took my knife and fork and I ate it up. When I tell you I devoured it, I mean devoured. It's mysterious at times, you have these questions the whole time reading it, like where have the girls gone? Why did they come back looking completely different? It's emotional at times, just the overall effect that the disappearances have. Like, hello emo hours. Let me just melt into a puddle of feels real quick. The book has magical threads rushing through it, and the more that I sit with this book, the more that I love it. It planted seeds in my mind when I first read it, and now there's just like this full garden of love for this book. I can't stop thinking about it, and I would very much so like to reread it very soon. What's the most disappointing book you've read? Read so far this year. For this one, I'm going with the book that I borrowed from the library. Thank God I borrowed it from the library because it was not for me. Beautiful World Where Are You by Sally Rooney. This follows four people and their romantic relationships, their jobs, their life experiences, their friendship, and their connections. Let me just say this, my expectations for this book were set so high solely based off the author. Like, this is a very loved author and the hype behind Sally Rooney books is soaring through the sky. It was hard to bring myself back to the ground and have real realistic expectations going into this one. Another thing that I want to put on the table before I talk about it, I understand this book despite not liking it. It really captures the small things in life, it's a very simple story, and there's beauty in that. There's beauty in the simple things in life and the simple things in the world. However, the most interesting bits about the characters are little blips within the story that are never explored. Had we detoured down those paths, then maybe I could have created a space for this book within my heart. But it was a crash and burn with no return. It's harsh to say this, but but I was bored the entire time reading this book. Like, it was so dull. I like the idea of books where it's just no plot, just vibes. And this one definitely falls into that category. There is a bit of a plot, but it's mostly just, like, friends hanging out, talking about life. But I think because we didn't really explore the actual interesting bits of the characters, this book just fell into such a boring place. And I, I couldn't get out of it. Like, I was, I was reaching, trying to climb my way out, begging for Sally Rooney to pick me up and pull me out of it. But, like, no. I was in the depths of the boring well, being drowned. The best word that I could use to describe this book is just dry. <laughs> just dry. What's the best book recommendation you've received this year? This recommendation actually came from one of you. It came from Sky, and that recommendation is We Need to Do Something. This is the story about a family that ends up taking cover in a bathroom during a tornado warning. Family have been having issues for a long time, and this will force them to kind of tackle those issues. It's the way this story takes place from beginning to end in a bathroom, and the author still managed to make it fascinating from start to finish. I was just amazed with how gripping this story
story became with each page flip. Like with each page flip, I became more and more intrigued and the author just like had a grip on me and I was just so into it. I must give props to this author because I don't know how they did that, but they did just that. It's not a comfortable reading experience by any means. In fact, I personally felt claustrophobic at times putting myself in the shoes of these characters. And then you take on the internal issues going on within the family and then the external issues going on kind of outside of the bathroom and it's a lot to swallow. I personally was not prepared for where this book took me like with each page flip it digs a little bit deeper into this like grim story that evolves over time and it's just ah oh, it's so fascinating. It's very experimental horror and I will say that like if you're somebody that reads horror often why is horror such a hard word for me to say? I struggle saying the word horror. It sounds like another word <laughs> but <laughs> as somebody who is not like super familiar with this genre you might read this and not find it that refreshing or that new but I just I inhaled this book in the best way possible. So if you are familiar with this genre and you read this book you might not be impressed by it but like let me have my moment okay. This book for me was shock after shock. I had to pick up my jaw off the floor several times and jam it back into place only for it to fall back down to the ground. It's disturbing and wild and I love it and I definitely want to explore more books like this. What was your first DNF of the year? For this one I'm going with the book of Ducks Newburyport. I should not have thrown this. Should not have thrown the brick of a book because that's exactly what this is. It's a big old brick. This is a very train of thought novel that follows the female lead of the household, the mother, and we sort of follow her digesting everything in life from her relationship, her friendships, her children, society, and America. It really covers kind of everything in life. I wanted to read this book because I was very fascinated by the fact that this book is made up of one entire run-on sentence. Like, I love weird concepts like that. I will often buy into a book if it has a unique format like this. I just love when people bring something fresh to the table with storytelling. And while I DNF'd it, I don't know that it's like completely off the table for me to ever read it. Like, I feel like I want to finish it at some point, but I was struggling with the way it was in fact written. And not so much like the run-on sentence format, but just kind of the overall bouncing around with thoughts because it really just like, oh, it goes all over the place consistently. It's just changing topics, changing ideas, changing what's going on. It's just, it's a lot to follow. And I think in part it's because my brain is so similar to like this kind of thought process. Like reading this, I was like, this feels very similar to my own brain. <laughs> like my brain is a conference of people all talking at the same time. That's what it consistently feels like up there. It's really fun up there. Welcome to my mentally ill brain. I just found it really overwhelming. It felt like loud thoughts that reminded me of my own loud thoughts. And I just couldn't do it at the time. I couldn't stick it, so I had to ditch it. I got 190 pages in. It's 988 pages, so I didn't even really make a dent in the book. Like I said though, I am gonna hold off on completely getting rid of it. I would like to tackle it at another time. I feel like it was just maybe one of those situations where it was like a good book but the wrong time and the idea of accomplishing this just excites me like it gets me really competitive like I wanna I wanna beat this book I wanna beat it not that kind of beat like competition kind of beat. Anyway, a new book release from this year that you've read and your thoughts on it, whether good or bad. I'm going with Chain of Thorns, book three in the Last Hours trilogy. I'm about to be a negative Nancy, so if you're not into that, then skip ahead a bit. I already wasn't feeling this trilogy as it was. Enjoyed book one, felt meh, very meh about book two. Book three, <laughs> abort mission. <laughs> going into this book, nothing was chaining me to it. If anything, the first two books were just kind of a thorn in my side. And this third and final book in the trilogy just kind of solidified the the fact that this trilogy in particular with Cassandra Clare is just not for me. Which I think I might be in the minority here because I looked on Goodreads and this book has over 28,000 ratings on Goodreads and has an average rating of four stars. So basically this is me saying that I'm not like all the other girls. So unique and different. I hate myself. Let me break it down for you as to why this didn't work for me. First up, plot points were eye roll worthy. I was afraid I was gonna get my eyes stuck up there and I'd have to make an appointment with the eye doctor. I was praying to God that I wouldn't have to do that. Tropes that were utilized in here are things that we often see in Cassandra Clare books. And I am just tired. <laughs> like, how many times are we gonna have a love triangle, my good sis? Let's drop it. I'm done with it. Close the chapter and let's move on out of here. Let's move on. Giddy on up, please. There's only so many times we can recycle it and bring it back. It needs to giddy on up out of here. The miscommunication, which is a thing that we often see in Cassandra Clare books as well, had me wanting to jump in the book and just yell at the characters and communicate for them. And overall, this was by far, in my opinion, Cassandra Clare's most slow-moving book I've read by her. And I was glad it was over by the time I reached the end of it. This was kind of a scathing review. What's come over me? A book demon took over my body and unleashed the heat on this book. Took the thorn that these books were out of my side and stabbed it right back into this book. 
A book that came out in the first half of the year that you want to read, and a book coming out in the second half of the year that you're highly anticipating. For a book that came out in the first half of the year, I have The Wishing Game. I just have a feeling when it comes to this book, the feeling that it's going to be a new favorite book. I've been wrong before in predicting favorite books, but I just feel real good about this one. This book is literally Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, but take out the candy and swap it for books. Yeah, it's gonna rock my world and I'm ready for it. It's about this famous children's author who disappears and then he comes back and he's got this competition that will change the life of one of his readers. And a book coming out in the second half of the year has to go to the new Percy Jackson book coming out, Percy Jackson and the Chalice of Gods. Even though I'm highly anticipating this one, I actually don't know if I will get to it by the end of this year. And that's because I'm really focused on prioritizing a reread of the Percy Jackson series. And I feel like for this one too, I feel like there might be a chance that I have to like get caught up on other Rick Riordan series before I can get to this one, like the Heroes of Olympus series, maybe the Apollo series. I don't know. I'm, I'm very behind and I just am afraid that this will be a big catch up for me. I could be wrong, but that's my inkling. And I know that a lot of you guys are probably going to be like, well, why don't you just get caught up? Easier said than done with me. I'm not typically the kind of person that can just grind out one series on its own or even just like one sort of fictional universe. I need some change ups, some swaps, some spice here and there sprinkled throughout my reading life. We'll see what happens. Regardless, I am still excited excited that we're getting a new Percy book. And we're getting this in the same year that we're getting the Percy Jackson series on Disney+. Plus. Like, we've been blessed. Best year ever. So far, 2023 has been a hit for me. What's the most beautiful book you've added to your collection or a beautiful book that you would like to own? For this one, I'm going with this Illumicrate book that I feel uncomfortable even touching because it's so beautiful. I don't feel like I should be putting my grimy fingers all over it, but... Here is an overview of this beauty. It's stunning, it's beautiful, it's amazing, mind-blowing. They did the dang thing with this book. I don't even think I'm gonna be able to read this specific edition. Like, I'm gonna have to get the audiobook or the ebook or a second edition to read it because I don't think I can touch this book. I don't think I can, like, feel comfortable reading from this beautiful book. I just, I don't see that happening. But I do want to read it because it sounds amazing. It takes place in a kingdom where each year 12 maidens are hung in order to respect Poseidon. And we follow Leto who has escaped the curse for 17 years, until now. It's her turn to die, it's her turn to be hung, but just as the act occurs, she escapes death. Leto finds that she is given the chance to break this curse, but it requires killing the prince of the kingdom that she's from. The thing is, the prince himself is also working to break the curse. They both have the same goal, which makes things incredibly tricky. Breaking the curse will save thousands, but if they fail, fate will drown them all. Not only does this book look stunning, but the story itself sounds stunning. I'm super excited to read this one. But again, I don't think I can touch this book. Like, I, I feel uncomfortable. I'm putting the book down. What genre have you read the most from this year? Oh, the trophy goes to romance. It's been a very romancy year. I'm not ashamed to say that it's romance, but I also don't want this to be my most read genre of the year by the end of the year. I've enjoyed my little dabble, my little romance binge, but I just want to read something different. Something a little magical, a little fantastical, a little thrillery, a little mystery -y. Just something different and exciting that will pull me out of the real world. That's what I want. Sign me right up, Buttercup. Do you feel like your reading tastes have changed or shifted at all this year? Whether that be a new genre you love, a trope you adore, or a new favorite theme you love exploring in a book? Absolutely not, and there's nothing wrong with that. Even though I do want to make more of an effort to be able to say at the end of the year that I've read from a variety of genres and authors with different themes and different tropes and all of that, and I feel like I have been planting the seeds to achieve that, and the day you plant the seed is not the day you eat the fruit, but by the end of the year I'm hoping to have lots of fruit to share with you all. If you set any bookish goals for yourself this year, how are they going? I technically did anti-goals this year. If you haven't seen the video, go check it out. But I did have a bit of a goal in the back of my mind going into this year where I wanted to keep my Goodreads up to date and then also my recent reads Instagram highlight up to date as well. And I haven't kept up with either because I suck at making goals and sticking to them, which is why I did anti-goals this year. Your boy has issues. <laughs> what book format have you found yourself gravitating towards the most this year? I'm a ride or die for my audiobook and physical book combo. You want that full immersion? It will erase the world around you and plant you in the world of the book. Boom, boom. I stand by it. It's the best reading method. I will say though, my friend Tori from Tori Dreaming, link to her channel in the description, has inspired me a lot recently to get back to my e-reader. She's been an e-reader girly lately and she's in my friend group and me and that friend group like literally influence each other so much. So she has influenced me to pick up my e-reader and get back to it, which feels like a little bit of a plot twist because I haven't really been much of an e-reader person lately, but like I'm starting to get back to it. I must ask the question though, like how is it that I read faster on an e-reader? 
or it feels like I read faster. There's gotta be a science behind that. I need someone to educate me, stat. Finally, a book you've read this year that you feel embodies the vibe of your reading year, or what you want your reading year to be like. I would say both Big Tree by Brian Selznick and We Need to Do Something by Max Booth the Third. These books are both very unique and experimental and push boundaries, and I would love for my reading to kind of shift more into this space this year. Books like this just do something for my soul. Like, they just excite me, and I feel like I'm just never bored reading books like this would love more experimental type books like these. That is it for the mid-year reading check-in book tag. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Again, shout out to the OG creators of the mid-year book freakout tag. I will leave their channels down below in the description. If anybody wants to do this tag, I will have the questions listed down below in the description, so take a whack at it. But I want to hear from you guys down below in the comments. Let me know how your reading year has been so far. How has your 2023 year of reading been? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content, from me. Be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. I just hit my elbow. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye. I, 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 I. Oh, I hit the camera. Oops. Bye.